Today I'm going to demonstrate to you the performance of my Silicon Graphics 320 Visual Workstation. And what you notice from the logon screen is that I have Windows 2000 Professional installed on the machine. First up I'm going to bring up the performance monitor so that you can track the system's performance throughout the video. And I'm also going to bring up CPU Z to show you the machine's configuration. Okay, the machine is fitted with two Pentium 3Es running at 1000 MHz and according to CPU Z, each one of these CPUs is currently actually clocking at 1.1 GHz. As far as the system's memory is concerned, the, the system has 512 megabytes of memory installed of which 476 megabytes are available to the system according to CPU Z. Now quickly going to open up GPU Z and as you can see GPU Z actually doesn't tell you anything concerning the graphics chip in this machine and this is because the machine is not fitted with an NVIDIA or an AMD chip it's fitted with the silicon graphics cobalt graphics chip and as a result GPU Z doesn't pick up any information from this chip this does create a bit of a problem when it comes to gaming in that the machine does not allow you to run DirectX properly when it comes to the graphics side of things Okay, the first demonstration I'm going to carry out today is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I'm running it in a windowed mode. As this machine came out in the year 1999, and this game came out quite a few years later. As far as I know, Return to Castle Wolfenstein is based on the Quake 3 engine, and it's a much more heavy game than Quake 3 is to run. Okay, I'm going to get to the game. Although the graphics work well for the game, there is a slight bit of a lag when it comes to the sound. And one thing you'll notice as well concerning the system is when you look at the performance monitor, the system is only making use of one of its processors to run the game. So although the system has two CPUs fitted, only one of them is actually being used at this point. I'm going to skip the videos to save some time. Okay, and this is going to take quite a while to load. The system is fitted with a 15,000 RPM SCSI drive, which was very fast for the time period that this system existed in, but by today's standard this is a very slow drive. And as you can see, the game runs pretty well. You've got a couple of tear frames, but in this windowed mode, the game seems to be pretty playable. As I said before, if you look at the system monitor, only one of the CPUs is really being used. And there is a bit of a lag when it comes to the sound. Performance isn't actually that bad if you consider when this machine was made.
And the performance outside isn't that bad either. German grenades down there. Okay, I just got my health back. Okay, and that ends the level. And that also ends my demonstration of the game. Okay, next I'm gonna open up Blender. And Blender's already set up to render this scene, so I'm quickly gonna start the rendering process. Okay, and as you can see, the system yet again isn't making use of its full processing capabilities. So it's rendering the scene, but you aren't making use of both CPUs. Only one of them is really being used. Okay, I'm not going to cut the video here, and I will return once the scene is fully rendered. Okay, I'm back. I cut the recording in order to save time some time, because this does take quite a bit of time to render, and rendering is like watching paint dry. 
As you can see from the performance monitor, the machine is only effectively making use of 50% of its processing power. And this is rather disappointing because if it was one of the MIPS SGIs, it would be making use of all of its processing power. So that was one of the drawbacks to the Visual Workstation. It didn't quite have the performance that the MIPS machines had. Okay, and the image is rather nice. You got some transparency in the blocks as well as a nice film grain applied to the image. And this concludes my demonstration of the 320. Thanks for watching.